So then you can wipe off the highlighter when you wipe off your desk. Well, it's only February now. Maybe I can teach you as much about circles as you could ever want to know. You only want to know what? You want to know this amount? So you want to start at the beginning and get all the way back to the beginning? Yes? Wait, so you want to know zero? Then. But I'm trying to make the joke with Katie. All right, anyone able to tell me what we need to highlight and why uh, this being printed out in black and white is not amazing? <laughs> Very eighth grade answer there, par for the course. The sector needs to be the entire slice there. The cord is just the line stretching across the circle. So technically, the diameter is a chord, just like a square is a rectangle. But when we have a more specific name, we give it the more specific name. So we don't call a square a rectangle, and we don't call the diameter a chord. We use the more specific name that the chord that goes through the middle of the circle is the diameter, and a segment, one of the most confusing. I don't know why they called it this. Don't be mad at me. Be mad at them. Amar, where are your glasses? Where? I thought you guys said he has his glasses today. Okay, Amar, take a front seat. Move your stuff. Juan, we're not going to deal with you not being able to see. We're late, we're not wearing glasses. I think I need to call your mom. <clears throat> All right, so the radius we know is not a chord because to be a chord, it must extend from one edge of the circle to the other edge of the circle. Now, tangent is also not in a great place here. I would really like us to draw a different tangent. Anyone know why a tangent line is a tangent line? It is 90 degrees to the circle at that point. So if we wanted to draw another tangent line, come out to the radius that touches your edge right here, just draw a 90 degree line. That would also be an example of a tangent, but we like being able to see the radius hitting it at a 90 degree angle. They're both orange. So they may end up looking slightly different, but they're both orange. I would choose three distinct colors. What color would you like, Amar? Blue. What that means is y'all have been stealing my highlighters. Any questions on those parts of the circle? Fantastic. Now step over to this sector, right? Because we said a sector is a slice of the circle. And we are going to calculate the area of the sector and the arc length of this portion. Oh, wait. We, we don't have an arc over here we're missing. So on this circle we could indicate an arc so I got distracted by Amar not having his glasses segment is the section of the circle between the cord and the outer edge of the circle 
So segment, and this is what sucks, right? We're used to like a line segment is like, but a segment here is a two-dimensional section, actually. Well, let's make sure we're not just playing with the highlighters. All right, right here, we're going to find the arc length and the area. So how can we do this? Yes. What do you mean a squiggly line? Like the line across? No, because a chord is straight. A chord is a straight line. It probably, I don't even know if it has a name. So you're saying like if you did this and looked at like this space. Chords are straight. They're not. Chords are straight. All right. Over here, I feel the need to walk you guys through this because some of you have not even attempted this homework yet, and it's due, I think, today? I forget. Um, okay, due on Friday, but that, that does not mean that you should wait. Yeah, okay, so there you go. Due the 26th. Hey, I don't care about the answer. I care about the process. What does this indicate for us? What does that actually tell us when we go to work on arc length and area? So we will use ratios and say this is 90 out of 360, or yeah, you guys are smart. It's a full. So then, when things get written down, you should be writing. I don't know why I don't see your hand. Where's your pencil, dude? Amar. Hey, everyone stop. Amar, you are very close to going out in the hall and calling your mother right now. I need you to realize it's a school day and we're having class and it's time to be a student, okay? You don't have your glasses, you came to class late and you don't even have a pencil out. We gotta get serious. Get one from my jar if you need one. Sharpen it if it needs sharpened. I should not have to talk to eighth graders like this. If you came to class on time, you would have time to get your pencil and everything ready. But I heard you had a big lunch, clean up, whatever. We got to work on your processes. And I think just having your glasses would be a really good first step. Hey, office. Finish this on your own. Would you call a Mars mother and ask about his glasses, please? Thank you very much. This seems to be an ongoing issue. So if this is 7, which if you can't see it because the print is not amazing, this is also 7. Right? So we know that area, what's our normal circle area formula? I'll let you guys figure out. I'll just finish this on my own. You guys can. Nowhere did I say circumference, actually. Arc and area. It's on your paper, friends. So again, the question that was so rudely answered, area formula 
is pi times radius squared. Yes? Fantastic. Thank you very much. So our radius here is 7. 7 squared is? 4 to 49. Oh, that's not very nice. But so 49 pi divided by 4, however you want to write it. We are often going to leave these values in terms of pi, guys, when it does not come out nice. So I could write this as 14 pi over 4. Um, or 14 fourths pi. This wouldn't be bad. This division would be what three and a half. You get three and a half pi here. The biggest thing that we want to make sure we pay attention to is we are going to use our angles, our central angles here, as our scale factor essentially. So we are scaling based off what portion of the circle that we had. Do we have questions about scaling to find the arc? which is a portion of the circumference and or scaling to find the area, which is a portion of the area. So this is technically a sector, right? And the only reason I said, or didn't say of the sector here is because I ran out of space and I had to come back and delete some words because literally my page wouldn't fit. So I had it saying, then find the arc length and the area of the sector below, but then it dropped down and it looked bad. So this, remember, this is a sector. So if you're asked to find the area of a sector, now segments are harder to find the area of, right? Because a segment is this weird, just chopped off portion of a circle. We will get there eventually. That's not where we're headed right now. Take a moment to think about triangle PMN. They tell us it is isosceles, and I feel like that's worth something. Katie Ann? Yeah, let's look. let me... Uh, Check e hall pass just because the schedule's weird. I want to make sure there's not people stacked up in there. Do eighth grade teachers still use e hall pass? After lunch, the bathrooms just sometimes get crowded. All right, you're good. There's no one else out. Alina? Ah, so that's what we need to identify, is these are our same lengths. And we wouldn't necessarily know, yeah, this is from the article. I pulled these from the article because I realized that we should probably talk about them together because if it didn't make sense, it'd be good to give you guys the opportunity to ask me. So the angle opposite the side is determined by how big the side is. Right? Or the size of the angle or the size of the side is determined by the size of the angle, right? We can go either way. So a mar, what would be angle P? I know, because you were sitting there like this spacing out. And that's why I picked on you. Sorry, I know I'm kind of targeting you today, but man, you're killing me. Like, every time we come to school, there's some sort of issue impacting your learning. You're looking up at the sky instead of looking at the board. Draw what I drew. This arrow should come from this side of 7 across the circle. It relates to angle P. If I really want to color code this, although I, I like them being the same, this 7 goes across the circle and corresponds to this angle. So since both of these edges of our triangle are both seven, the angles opposite those congruent sides will also be congruent. So how big is angle P? 50. Yeah, the same size as angle N. So then that leaves us with angle X being 80 degrees. Now in this arc measure section, we're probably gonna speed up a little bit. I have 
just under a half hour left. If you've done the practice already, you've probably seen these. I promise there's new stuff on the back. But Margaret, what could I do in this first problem here with these expressions that have been given? What could we do with those expressions to, to eventually figure out what n is? Yeah, we recognize they all equal 360. Very good job. It's all of them. So we would set up our like terms together. All right, so 13n, 7n, and 6n together. I'm trying to get zoomed in on this. Lamar, I know you don't have your glasses. Would be a total of 26n. What about your constants? If we have a 12 and a negative 16, what's the value of the constants put together? What's 12 plus a negative 16? Negative 4. So we're going to get 26n and a negative 4 equals 360. Go ahead and try to solve this algebraically. If you need to look up at the board for help, that is okay. Otherwise, try to do it on your own. Anyone got in? What is it? Three sixty four divided by twenty six. Fourteen. So now they say minor arc BC. Anybody able to talk to me about what, like, minor arc? Does that mean it's like less than 18 years old? Well, compared to what? Minor. Ah, minor versus major. So when we see minor arc BC, guys, that tells us it is the less than half the circle between B and C. There's also major arc BC, and it's the other. It's a semicircle. Then. They'd probably just say arc. I don't want to give you a blanket answer. I think that's con's default, but I don't want to like it probably depends on who's asking. Yeah, so that doesn't always happen, but that is a good reminder. So the other way that we can talk about major arc BC is to name it BAC, right? If you want to make sure that we start at B and travel around past A to get to C, or start at C and travel past A to get to B, that's another way that we can do it. But if there are only two points on your circle, it's just major versus minor. Major is going to be your bigger, minor is going to be your smaller compared to the diameter. Which leads us over to the second one here. What is the arc measure of minor arc YZ? Okay, so YZ is right here. By the way, here we just needed to do 6 times 14. What was this? Whoa, whoa. Two different answers, really far apart. Back on BC. Sorry, back on BC. What was 6 times 14? 84. Okay. Any questions about the first one here? We put all of the expressions together equal to 360, solved algebraically. What are our expressions going to sum to here? Avi, we haven't heard from you yet. Uh, 
Absolutely. 16W plus 4 equals 180, which then we're good enough. We don't have to write out the minus 4 if we don't want to. W is equal to 11. So YZ is this arc. Right? So you guys did 55 plus 4, right? So you got 59. Or I thought I heard somebody say it's 55. So I got machines in my ears too. Because if you guys want to open that window more, you can too, by the way. It's actually kind of nice outside today. It is not freezing. Scientifically speaking, it is not freezing. It's actually melting if we want to be scientific. Uh, I would guess about 98.6. I guarantee you are not freezing. I guarantee it. You are not freezing. Yes, you heard me. Uh, it's like covered in crows, so I don't know if you really want to go out there. What would we do with these expressions? Set them equal, solve it algebraically. I don't think we need to spend the time to practice that. Unless anybody has any questions from the front. So, cheat sheet on the back in a way. This fact we should already know. That a central arc, or sorry, a central angle is equal to the inscribed arc. An inscribed angle, which means it's on the edge of the circle, right? The angle touching the edge of the circle, not from the center. This is an inscribed angle. So, guys, if this isn't like, oh, yeah, duh, you might want to highlight it and make sure that you realize inscribed means it's touching the edge of the circle. That then extends across to the other side, quote, unquote, like it doesn't always go to the other side depending on how big it is. Like it might go near it. You are correct. Math always reviews before we move forward. I know. Sorry. We got to review before we move forward. So this is half of the arc that it inscribed. Here are the weird ones, right? These two, these are the ones that I wanted to make sure that you had. If we have an angle that is not a central angle and is not an inscribed angle, then you can go get a drink if you need one. Then it is half the sum of the arcs. Guys, I would highlight something to help you remember this. If I add this arc and this arc together, essentially this angle is the average of them, but, but to average two things, it's just we half it. And we know it's vertical to the other angle, so that's also half of the sum of the arcs. And same with the external, except what changes? It's subtraction. It is the larger arc, so the one on the opposite side of the circle, minus the smaller arc, but not major minor, because notice they come from different points. So we're not saying major versus minor. It's the larger arc on the opposite side of the circle minus the smaller arc on the like the side that we kind of came from and half of that. So the average of those. Any questions on those rules? All right. So... I want to see if we have five minutes to answer those three arc problems, if we can do it. So have at it. And then start thinking about radians. See what you know, see what you don't know, see what you can write down. We, I probably won't be able to like wait for five minutes, but I want to give you guys a couple minutes to try to solve those arc lengths on your own. We're not using... The rules above these, by the way, I just gave you those rules so you have them. You don't need them to solve this next section. You do not need those rules.
Yeah, grab a calculator. <clears throat> Excuse me, grab a calculator if you want. Make your life easier, don't make your life harder. Who can remind me how we're going to do the first one here? Because I see a couple people's pencils not moving, so I feel like we should go over one of these together. <clears throat> Even though it might be tempting to look at the small angle, our central angle is the 330, so it's the big arc all the way around. We are going to take the angle given divided by the entire degrees and multiply that by your circumference. This actually simplifies to 11 twelfths times 12, which is real fun. This actually comes out to be 11 Now we are using the ratio of, nice of you to join us. We're using the ratio of the uh, central angle that we have divided by the entire. Right, never take a comment from me like, nice of you to join us. Like, that's always a joke. I don't care. Like, if you don't come to my class, eh, whatever. You can watch the video. You can come talk to me later. Like, you probably got better things to do. I know, math class ain't important. Who cares about math? I don't know. Who do you think I am? Your seventh grade teacher? I don't give a crap about math. I don't know trigonometry. What? I can't, I can't lie about trig. All right, so right here... Same thing, right? 340, ooh, wait, but what if I asked you for this R? Ooh, what if Mr. Hudson's changing it? What would this angle be? 20, right, because is there, is there a name like, like we have supplementary, right, for adds to 180. We have complementary for adds to, is there any name for like adds to 360? I, I mean, you might be right. That it might might be stuck like that. <laughs> what what does it say? Explementary. That sounds like a bad word. <laughs> Woo hoo! Glasses. So, if you would like to use fancy words, there's almost always a math term to describe things. Someone has defined it. <laughs> now I'm kind of curious. Chord in a circle, but not straight. Oh, that's like, I mean, I know what it's talking about, but that's not what she's talking about. Yeah, a chord of a circle is a, sorry to break your heart, straight line segment. So you can't, you just can't call it a chord anymore. The infinite line of extension from the chord... If we're going to go down this rabbit hole, we're going to go down this rabbit hole. 
This, this extended out is what Alina is talking about with the secant. That's what, like, if you extend this out, and we'll get there. We'll come back to unit circle to talk about this thing. Not segment, secant. What'd you say? Oh, tangent. Well, tangent's out here. Tangent's not in the circle. Right, that is not, you're mixing up two different branches of things. It's, you're good. Just don't, the tangent line is not inside the circle. Tangent line is outside the circle, makes a 90 degrees with it. So, back to the back. Seventy-two degrees. Anyone, anyone realize yet what nice relationship seventy-two degrees has in our circle? You're so hung up on that. It's what? Seventy-two is twice of thirty-six, right? Yeah, it's a fifth, right? 72 degrees. Guys, 72 degrees is a fifth of our circle. So if this is the arc that is 72 degrees of the circle, it's going to be a fifth of our circumference. And what's a fifth of 20? Four. So we don't even need a calculator here. If we start to recognize, oh, 72 has got a nice relationship with 360, it is just one fifth. Because we started talking about it, then a Mars glasses showed up, and I think I got distracted. All right, moving on to radians, because I think we're good on these. If you guys have questions on these, please come see me at Extensions. I am, by the if we haven't talked about this, I don't have seventh graders that, like, land here for Extensions. They come for math help. I don't have, like, my advisor group here. So if you guys want help, please come get help. There's normally only, like, two or three kids down here. because we changed the schedule so that my extensions could be just math lab. All right, so radians. Who knows anything about radians? Oh, yeah. Aside from it is a setting on our calculator. Oh, Go ahead. Hey, just one at a time, but let's just have a conversation of what do we know. So sorry, start again. They're not degrees. Not degrees. A mark. Okay. Never mind. All right, well, they shouldn't, but they might. Actually, all they measure is... No, never mind. I'm, I don't want to try to, like, spin that to... Yeah, I'm just trying to be an eighth grader to your eighth grader comment. I shouldn't. Amar? Sure, yeah, it makes you sound smarter. When you're talking about an angle and you talk about it in radians and people are like, what? Starts with the same letter as rainbow dash, very important. Actually starts with the first same two letters. It sounds like radius. I don't think that is a coincidence. Okay, so it has something to do with the radius in some way, very specific. Oh, I am reading that the radian is the measure of the angle equals the ratio of arc length over radius. So the angle has the same radian measure no matter how big. Okay, wait, okay. So for any angle, we can imagine. Wait, are we actually talking about something that you don't, like, firmly understand yet? Do I actually get to, like, be your teacher? <laughs> but what does that mean? Well, that's, that's not helpful, then. Don't give me something that we can't use. Wait, what did you even say? One radian is what? It's 180 divided by pi. 
wait, 180 degrees divided by, so degrees per pi? Wait, so hold on, grab a calculator. What is that? 180 divided by pi. So wait, okay, so hold on, hold on. Alina said that the amazing Google gods. That's pretty sweet, but we're uh, that's not a circle, and we're talking about circles. All right, so wait, Alina said one radian, we can always cross this out if we find out it's not right, is 180 divided by pi, which is approximately 57.29. Six. No, that's that's that is the point. Because you don't get the point yet is why I have a job. Because you don't yet know this. Nope. This length in your circle R is also here. We know that, right? Both of these are radiuses. But that is also this, and that is also this. A radian is the arc length distance equivalent to your radius. So a radian of travel, when we start getting into calculus, and polar coordinates. If you want to like start to freak yourself out, go Google polar coordinates. Don't do it right now. Um, polar, like Polar Express. Not, I didn't say do it this moment. I'm go, go to somebody else's class and do it. So as we start to talk about motion, lots of things deal with, what, what do we call it when things are like spinning? Yeah, but sin centrifugal forces and centrip so there's actually two it's, it's it's when you watch like tvs or movies or whatever you've heard different words and people are like oh yeah the centrifugal force have you guys ever been on that ride um down at uh cosi where it's like the cup and you get inside of it and there's the walls are like rubber and whatever it starts spinning and the floor starts to drop out and you're stuck to the wall literally there is a ride at cosi unless they took it down i mean i'm old so whatever um but it was like a giant cup and it would fit like 10 people or something. So take like a giant cylinder and you'd get in it and it would just start spinning. And they have these rides at the fair too. But unlike the fair, this one, then the floor started to drop out of it. And you'd like be looking at the person across from you and you're like, they're floating. What? They're floating. And you go to like lean forward. You go to lean forward and now you guys are going to like want to go find one of these rides because it is super cool. And you like, there's this moment where you, break the force that's pushing your head back and actually if you start to like keep leaning forward off the wall you'll start to feel yourself pulled into the middle when i'm serious when when you are being acted on by a circular for right like something spinning outward there are two forces at play there's a force that pushes outward and there's actually a force that pushes inward Crazy, crazy stuff. But this is where we're headed, is understanding how all those forces like come into play with each other. Yes? <laughs> the radius, but it is a radian. What do, you, what do you mean, okay, never mind? Oh, but it is. Oh, but it is. <laughs> no, always. Always. So. Yeah. yeah. I'm not trying to make your life harder. I'm trying to make your life easier.
So, check it. This is what I'm going to be assigning you next. Hey, guys, I have like three minutes and you can have your tangent conversations out in the hall. Ha, ah, see what I did there? You're going to be processing through all of this stuff to get down. Now, don't come on to, like, once I assign this, don't just come on to here and scroll all the way to the bottom because it won't help you. You should read things. This length, if I take that red line from the... There's a time when it stops being funny and it's just disrespectful. And you guys do a, a pretty good job most of the time, but when I have very limited time left and you guys actually don't understand something, it is just kind of disrespectful to keep interrupting me when, when you obviously don't understand what I'm teaching you. It's also just a poor decision on your part to like talk over the person who knows more than you. So we can just cut it here for today because apparently you guys don't feel like learning anything else and we'll pick this back up the next time that we come together.